So I'm uh, it's a little later than I would normally get going and walking around outside. outside. Uh, it's about seven o'clock now, but nothing opens here. Like not even like breakfast places, things like that until seven o'clock. I looked on the map before I got out of my room. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get some breakfast now and then uh, head into the church museum that I tried to go to last night, but was closing. And then I'm heading to the uh, the national, like the main Naples uh, museum. And then I'm heading to uh, probably the uh, the catacombs. So that's the plan for today so far. We'll see where that goes. We'll see if that goes anything like planned uh, or if it's more like yesterday. Let's head out. Heading to get breakfast at a place called uh, San Domenico Cafe. It uh, is included in my uh, hotel stay. So I'm uh, gonna go try that out. It closes at uh, 12 a.m. So it's actually a breakfast only place, but didn't open until 7 a.m. So I'll let you know how that is. I walked right by the place. So now let's go have some breakfast. Okay, definitely take all the opening times and closing times online for everywhere in Naples uh, with a grain of salt because uh, the places that say they open at 7 do not open at 7. Um, maybe the people get there at 7, I can't really tell. And then they start cleaning up, spraying off the sidewalks, all that stuff. Uh, so I don't know when they actually open, but none of the places that are have included breakfast and say they're open at 7 uh, are open. I mean, even the places that aren't included aren't open right now. So I'm really just gonna wander around because the uh, first place I, the first place I, uh, I'm going doesn't open until eight according to the website. But we'll see about that. Uh, one cappuccino, and uh, I'll take that one back there. So I, uh, not going to one of the places that's included in my uh, breakfast because. Uh, they just aren't open yet. This place is open, and I don't feel like waiting. I mean, it's gonna cost me maybe a few euro, but whatever. I have been served. I got myself a cappuccino and some puffy thing. So let's give them a try. This is my first actual cappuccino here. Man, their coffee is so freaking good. Oh my god. So let's try this pastry thing. That is pretty good. It's a little sweet. It's lemon. A little, little bit of lemon in it. If there's anything inside, I haven't gotten to it yet. But it doesn't really need it because it's just a, it's a good, really soft, slightly sweet, slightly lemony bread. Definitely a good grab. Well, that was a good little breakfast. I could not finish that entire pastry. I don't know what is wrong with me, but I am never hungry. I have not eaten for, at this point, well over 12 hours, and I still could not finish that entire pastry. I am just unable to actually eat quantities that normal people eat. I really thought all this walking and stuff would uh, would let me, but I was wrong. I'm gonna go pay for this and then be on my way. Got myself some much needed water. Uh, place still doesn't open for a half hour, according to the sign. So I'm just gonna wander some of the areas I haven't wandered yet and uh, just make a little loop. Anyone who knows me knows I'm not a real uh, city person. Generally, I do not like, like the actual main cities when we stay in them on our trips. I would say this one does not qualify. Although it is a large, major city, um, it's just different. At least the old town area that I'm in. Uh, but the, this old town historic district is quite large. So, I mean, you can just walk around these streets for a long time and not go into like the more modern areas of the, th the city. I actually don't even know if I'm going to be going into those on this trip for about three days. 
But a uh, nice little pot in my head after I bought this water was uh, the prices of the, the necessities here. Like the water, the coffee, is, coffee is a necessity. Only one euro, like that's so cheap. I did not expect that. And now I'm gonna flip the camera around and show this thing I just walked on. So apparently like in the US and a lot of other places because they had it in Greece too, that uh, the, the hemp bud, the CBD bud, is legal here. And they have it in a little uh, vending machine back there that I just picked up some from. This stuff doesn't really do a whole lot, but it is mildly relaxing. And if the heart starts racing a lot, it might calm me down a bit. Just gonna get a little pipe or something to use it in. But uh, that's kind of nice to know that's, a, that's an option. I've been smelling it all over and I assumed it was the real thing, but I guess it's, uh, I guess it's probably just that. But I gotta walk on the street real quick. And I'm still looping my way back around to that, uh, that church. I think I got about another 10 or 15 minutes before it opens. I just saw a kid trip and almost fall off the curb and his mom just laughed at him. It just made me think of my mom. I love you, mom. Well, I've arrived back here. It's still not open yet. Um, hopefully I got a, just a couple minute wait. But I guess we'll wait and see because the museum doesn't actually open until 9 or so anyways. That probably opens on time. But it's at least a half hour walk from here. So I'm going to go ahead and wait and see if this opens anytime reasonably soon. So hopefully maybe see you inside. I don't know if uh, cameras are allowed or what the rules are there. Okay, yet again, online times are not correct. Saw a little posted sign over there on the door, and I went over and looked, and it had the current functioning times, and they don't actually open until 10. So, I don't know when I will see that one. I'm gonna go ahead and start walking my way over to the museum. And, uh, fingers crossed that opens. It's all uphill going to the museum. So, uh, thankfully that's the morning, and then afterwards when I'm walking back, it's all downhill. So that'll be nice. I was just walking around, heading up to the uh, museum, and come on, focus. Saw, uh, saw this. Just some ruins underneath the city. Not a whole lot to see there, and it is thankfully fully gated off, so no one can go in there and destroy it. But people definitely throw trash. It goes way far down in there. I can't even see the bottom. I just see a ladder going down. Cool. So I've apparently learned my lesson to zoom in on the map when I'm figuring out how to get to one, from one place to another because uh, because uh, it looked like it was a straight shot on the road I was taking up to the museum, but it was not. It was a curve that I couldn't see on the map right beforehand. So I've got to do a little bit of a UE thing to go around. Uh, and I got to slalom in these cars because the sidewalk is super small and then going in there. So fun little uh, fun little street. But yeah zoom in on Google Maps. I have made it to the main road that the museum is on. But it is a music. This is the most cars and people I've seen here yet. Seeing all this traffic here it makes me super freaking excited for when I get to start driving in it. It seems very fun. I think I'm gonna be getting honked at a lot. Just got myself a wee little double shot, and I do mean wee little, because their shots here, espresso, are actually extremely tiny. I don't know how much uh, actual caffeine is in any of them, but I'm sure it'll be enough to abate off the headache. Got one to do a little shop by myself to buy myself some uh, Kleenexes because it is chilly out and it's got my nose a running. <sighs> but I still got at least 10 minutes before that place opens. I just couldn't sit still. I hate sitting still. It's boring. I just want to walk around and see things. So I'm just walking the giant block around the uh, museum. In my short time vlogging, I have learned one thing though. 
It is not for people who are like self-conscious, because you definitely get a lot of looks when you're talking to yourself through a camera. But being that I don't really care what people think, <laughs> okay, it's fine for me. Uh, I think it's a little different for the uh, vloggers who do this for a true career and get paid for it. It's a little different when you know you're making money. Ideally, that's where I'll be in the future, but... But yeah, it's, it's a little too bad. I'm not walking around with a giant camera like some of them are. I just got my phone with a good mic. But you still kind of stand out with your little fuzzy mic in the air. Okay, I'm at the museum as they're unlocking the doors and opening them up. I know I'm going to have to give them my backpack when I get inside like most museums. Uh, but I don't know about... Uh, I don't know what the camera. I don't know if I'm going to be able to take photos, videos, anything like that. Uh, so if I can and anything is cool and I want to show it, I'll show it. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like watching um, museum walk-around footage. It definitely isn't the same as being at a museum, especially if you don't really appreciate the stuff. But I went to uh, Pompeii last time I was here for uh, a full day. We got there when they unlocked the gates and we left when they were locking them. I mean, we spent literally an entire open day walking around Pompeii and it was absolutely incredible. I'm gonna take my mask off until I get inside, but it was absolutely incredible. And uh, I definitely don't recommend Pompeii as like a day trip, especially from Rome. You just don't have enough time there. It is a massive, massive city. Uh, so give yourself a full day. But because we did that, we didn't have any extra time. We didn't give ourselves any extra days. We, we didn't stay in Naples. Look at my little cowlick over here. Isn't that awesome? But uh, yeah, so we didn't get to go to the Naples Museum. And they say you have not seen Pompeii until you see the museum. So I'm going to go in there, probably three, four, five hours. I have no idea how long I'm going to spend in there. Uh, they have a secret room with a lot of sexual things, uh, which you have to tell them when you're going in that you want to go see. I'm definitely going to see that. Uh, again, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you anything, but I will if I can. I've made it into the museum. Uh, photos and video are allowed. I'm not going to use my big fluffy mic in here just because it's just too much and I'm holding it by hand. I don't have it on the selfie stick. But here's a brief look of the first room right when you walk in. And again, I'm just going to show the uh, essential stuff when I'm walking around. So I'm going to be here for a while. It always amazes me how much detail remains on some of these things that are just so so old. This is Apollo with her lyre. It is absolutely stunning. So I have got to say that this museum scared me at first when I first walked in because it's not overly impressive when you walk in the first statues they have when you've come in just aren't that amazing and there's not that many of them but once you actually start walking around here they you 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 it's, it's incredible <laughs> definitely worth the visit i think the egyptian room that i tried to go to at the beginning was uh, was closed i could see in but the door wasn't open in for me statues are and stuff like that so people know not really doable here because a lot of the ones that they have underneath the statues are actually in paper and are not replaced or kept up on so they're actually torn or illegible I love all the, uh, the statues 
they are not just plain white marble. Detail of these little things. Wait, they're still so detailed. For reference, those are probably the sizes of quarters or smaller. Like that right there. Smaller than a quarter. This is the room. and download the uh, Italian language for your language because uh, they uh, they really only put the uh, descriptions or what the uh, things are in uh, Italian. I'm looking at it right now. But as you can see, it's all Italian. Egyptian area isn't super impressive. They definitely got remnants from Egypt compared to uh, what you get to see actually in Egypt. However, you can't take pictures in the mummy area here, unlike in Egypt. And you can actually see the mummies. This one was apparently a 25 year old female. This area is not overly impressive, but as I like the weird, strange, macabre stuff, this is kind of cool.
absolutely loves ancient sarcophagus. Well, why ours became so plain and boring in modern times, but... This is all just rooms of uh, portraits and philosophers and stuff like that. So nothing, uh, nothing too impressive. A lot of them are reproductions of original Greek sculptures. I mean, these are still 2,000 years old. The Greek ones are 500 years or so older than those. Look at this chair. What the hell? This is walking back into the restroom here at the museum. Well, the first hour here was nice and peaceful, super quiet. Um, but by 10 o'clock, the crowds come, the kids come, and it gets extremely loud down there. Luckily, I'm mostly not with the first floor, so I'm heading upstairs to get away from them. I have not found the secret room. I'm thinking I'm gonna to have to ask about it before uh, I leave, but I just walked into the mosaic area, and I am in shock right now. I am in complete shock. My sister loves mosaics and she always talks about them and I knew there were incredible ones here but these are freaking insane they are like the tiniest little cubes to get like extreme detail and these mosaics mosaics are just incredible. I have seen mosaics so many places. And I get the appeal like from my sister's point of view, like she always raves about them. But I've never in my life seen mosaics with this kind of detail. Like they are like straight up paintings. Most of these, I don't know if all of them, but most of these were from Pompeii. So like you don't get to really see very many mosaics when you go to Pompeii. Because they've all been moved here to keep them safe. I mean, they're just incredible. These aren't small. Like this is, this is probably, I'd say four feet, four feet by four feet here. This whole thing is a mosaic, and it is huge. I'd say it is probably about, I'd say 12 to 15 feet long, probably 10 feet tall. Just incredible, absolutely incredible. I have found the secret room. I forgot their floor, floor naming is different in the Europe than in the US. When he told me floor one, that actually meant like for US floor two, you have to go up the stairs. Uh, so I'm about to enter in there and I'll show you guys what I see.
That was a little model of Pompeii to show the absolute massive scale of it. Uh, but they're cleaning, they're doing something in there. So most of that room is closed off and off limits and they're vacuuming. So I didn't want to talk while I was in there because I knew you guys wouldn't be able to hear me. But uh, yeah, like I said earlier, Pompeii is massive. Give yourself an entire day there. I wonder why they have this displayed like this. Like he obviously is supposed to be sitting up there. I don't really know why they would display it like this unless this was like temporary while they're getting it situated because they do seem to be working in this area of the museum. Okay, I gotta call out people my age. You all need to get your asses into museums because it's ridiculous that the only people I'm seeing in this museum are at least 20 years older than me. Like, where is the appreciation for all the ancient history and ancient art that made us who we are? It is absolutely crazy to me that unless you have to go for school, younger people don't go to museums. Like, I, I just don't get it. Here I am thinking I, uh, I've seen all the mosaics from in that mosaic area. And this is a different part of the museum, and I walk up on this. I mean, you can see those people over there, so you, oh, this is big. I don't see any placards about them. Oh, there it is. The Floor Mosaic of Augusta Brodica. This is a gladiator fighting with his own phallus, which has been turned into a panther. It's a bear skull from the second century. That there is smaller than a dollar bill. It's got that much detail carved into it. It always completely blows my mind how much glass, sometimes extremely thin or tiny glass pieces. I mean, these are all cups and goblets and urns and stuff, but uh, it's insane that all this glass survives, even broken, for literally thousands of years. This is apparently one of the uh, floors from one of the rich villas in the area. But it's absolutely awesome. How did it stay intact? the famous sculpture of Pan and the Goat, which I thought was in the, uh, the secret room. It might have been at one point, but it is not anymore. This is a model from wood and cork, which you can't see because of that horrible reflection I'm coming down the other side. But this is a model made from wood and cork of something I have not yet seen. Apparently this is a temple at uh, Paestum, which I will be going to in three days, I believe. I don't know how intact it is there, but they say it's the best uh, Greek ruins outside of Greece. So, I am looking forward to that. Apparently the squeakiness from my shoes. 
shoes and these things that they put on my feet are from my shoes, not from the things, because other people's aren't squeaking like that. I don't know why that, that rap makes my shoes squeak, but I feel like I'm annoying everybody with it. So that is a cool glass. Right there, I'd just like to drink something out of that. Well, not that original one, but a, a coffee would be. I usually dig on all that pottery and stuff because there's just so much of it absolutely everywhere. At any museum you go anywhere, there's just sections and sections of pottery. So I've seen a lot of stuff like this before. I usually just take pictures of the uh, any that really pop out to me. Okay, now I understand the foot covers. These are some of the uh, actual old mosaic floors from like Pompeii or Hercules. You know? All the ones we had been walking through were just marble, so I didn't really understand. But once you get here, it's like, oh, okay, you're letting you walk on uh, two, three, four thousand year old mosaics. I guess, uh, I guess that makes sense. You want me to put, put some foot covers on? I think it's awesome that they uh, they did this. They brought these in from Pompeii to preserve them. Just had myself another quick espresso in, uh, in the museum, in the museum's cafe. And even here in the museum, an espresso is only one euro. That is absolutely crazy. I think I may have possibly explored all of it. They have a gallery thing going on right now, but I walked over there and it was not impressive. Like it was just some weird thing that they just didn't, didn't like, didn't interest me. So if I am done, if I have seen it all, then it did not take me anywhere near as long as I thought it was going to. It's only been like maybe two and a half hours or so. But I mean, that would be fine because there's a lot of stuff I want to do. And I definitely see this place starting to get busier in some of the rooms I've already walked through. So I'm gonna see if I've seen it all. And if I have, I'm heading up to uh, the, uh, the catacombs, which are tour only. Um, I do not have a tour reserved. I'm hoping I can get up there and reserve one. I don't, I didn't want to reserve anything and then not be able to make it. So, uh, I think it's about a 20 to 30 minute walk from here up to there. So, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing any other rooms open here that I haven't went in. There's a lot of closed doors. Uh, but it looks like I'm off to the, uh, off to the catacombs. Cool, I'm officially out of the museum. It, it is, what time is it? It is 11.19, so I was there for uh, basically just over two hours. And I'm a museum person. I was not going fast, I was taking my time. It is probably super freaking loud right now with all this traffic, but I assume you can hear me. But uh, yeah, it's just a little over two hours. I took my time, I saw all the things I wanted to see. I stood in front of some of the pieces and actually admired them for a bit. And it only took me a little over two hours, so. It's not as long of a museum as I went into it expecting, which is good because I got a little longer than I uh, thought I was going to have today to do things. But right when I walked out of the museum, I was getting my phone ready to shoot. Oh, my nose is all marked up from my mask. But uh, I was setting my phone up ready to shoot and I looked across the street at all the cabs and uh, the cab number that's right across the street caught my eye. I'm going to show you real quick. Cab number 6969. But now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna start my walk up to the uh, 
up to the catacombs. It's pretty much one road the whole way, uh, but it is like a 20 minute walk. Uh, I'm gonna try to not use any cabs, taxis, things like that. This whole trip, if I can help it, outside of when I have to take the bus down in the Amalfi. Uh, I just wanna get, get my exercise and walking in. The temperature difference between the sun and the shade here right now is freaking ridiculous. Like the sun is so bright and like beaten down right now that it's like warm out here. But you walk in the shade and you're a chilly. It's like no happy medium. But oh well, let's uh, continue this walk up to the uh, up to the catacombs. No idea what this is. I was just walking <laughs> down the sidewalk and I turned and looked in the right into one of the little cubby hole things. That's where people live. And uh, this is what I saw. This is the one that has the famous uh, skull with ears, which are not actually ears, they're just bones that have like folded in a way that they look like ears. Uh, I definitely, I, I might put a picture I can find online. Um, otherwise, I, uh, I recommend going online and looking at pictures of that because uh, it's a cool little creepy bat looking skull. This is honestly freaking beautiful. Here, guys. Like, I'm going to wander down this street here and look for uh, maybe somewhere I can sit and get something to drink or something and just admire this view for the rest of the evening. I uh, definitely am glad I chose to walk down here.